Welcome back to the Dice Tower on Spectacular. I'm Mike Delicia. I'm Z Garcia. That was so good. Damn. I'm Chris Blah. Chris Blah. Chris, Chris Blah. 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 That was too good. That was ye. too good, Z. You took I my. I pronounce ye. Ah. Blah D. See? Blah D. Blah D. Well, it is the time of scariness and, and uh, fear and. We're going to be yeah, leaning into that. Yeah, right. With our top. Well, I thought you were talking about the hurricane. Well, <laughs> there is that. Let's, uh, like, yeah. That's real time horror there. We're going to be doing our top 10 horror games today. And mm -hmm. uh, we actually are going to have Tom's list here. We are. That we're going to mock and deride, correct? I like that. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. So Good. Tom had prepared his list. He originally was going to be here, but you know, tried to get out early for the uh, the impending storm. And so yes. we're going to be giving our lists and Tom's list, and then at the end we'll also have the people's choice. But before we get to all that stuff, before we get into the nuts and bolts, just like Frankenstein's monster, let's talk about a contest, shall we? Let's do it. I'm thinking yeah. $50 gift certificate to Game Nerds. $50? That's five How zero. does it work? No, that sounds too generous. That can't be right. Double check. Oh, me. that's right. Fifty dollars. So there's a lot of uh, fine games you can get, especially at Game Nerds with their tremendous sales. You can get a lot of choices. Many of the things we're talking about on this list, maybe Correct. you might be able to pick up from GameNerds.com to win that fifty dollars gift certificate. All you need to do is write us at contest at dicetower.com. God, go with the email. Probably rather than a than a snail mail. Let's email us at contest. It'll be slightly com. faster. Yeah. It will be in will the be. subject line. Put the word harvest. That's beautiful. Harvest. That's beautiful. Yeah, there's nothing spookier than a harvest. There time. is Those nothing big combines. spookier <laughs> than harvest. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're like a snail carrying someone's mail, that's frightening. <laughs> I, that I, don't, they, I don't know what this is. The combine. Oh, is that It's a like technically like that. Yeah, combines don't work like I, this. I, I, it's I'm a helicopter farmer. combine. Oh. Combicopter. <laughs> I, I don't know how farming works. Combicopter. <laughs> Gentlemen, like how did you uh -huh. approach this list? Numerically. With extreme caution? I, I thought to myself, uh -huh. hmm, which of the games I enjoy playing, mm -hmm. yes, would I consider spooky? Spooky? In theme, in mm -hmm. setting, uh, good for the season. Ah, okay. Okay. And then I organized them. Some of the ones that trended to the top, I thought handled the subject matter in interesting ways. There we go. That's... Not necessarily the scariest ones. Yes. Because they can be a little silly scary. That's right. okay. I want. I have plenty of silly yeah. scary. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, just uh, they do it well. They do it interestingly. They're good games too. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, I do. I do like every game on my list, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, it's not necessarily in the order of how much I like the games is how well I think they evoke this kind of theme. Look, board games in and of themselves are generally not scary, right? It's not an easy medium to depict fear through. Correct. But right. you can definitely get the atmosphere. You can kind of, you know, and, and you can help with that by doing, you know, kind of 
spooky music and yeah, such. That's the end of the round. Right, right. Feed your workers. Right, but most of these games don't necessarily right, need right. that. Who so wants to eat that? That's how I approached it. Mine are definitely more atmospheric mm-hmm. as you get to number one. Mm-hmm. Like and CO2, stuff like that. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> CO2, CO1, the prequel to that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the definitely most atmospheric the closer you get to the top. Uh, and then further down, like closer to 10, are maybe the goofier, like the less what people would consider typical, like horror, mm. but these are horror themes. All of these yeah, on my yeah. list are horror themes, even though, you know, feel free to disagree if you wish, but that's, yeah, that's kind of. But you're wrong. Yeah. Get closer to number one before you judge my list. All right. Well, I like that. Sounds like we're ready to rock and roll. Roll, roll, Roy? Roll, Roy? Rock Roy, and roll, Roy. Roll into number 10. All right, my number 10 is a game that I think does a very nice job of kind of evoking this theme of, of ghosts Ooh. and, and psychics. Oh. oh. Psychics who are maybe trying to commune with ghosts and... Like go to pizzas? work with them? No, not, no, not commute. Oh. Commune. The words are hard. Commune. Ghost bus. With, with, with ghosts and Ghost spirits. Ghost <laughs> Huh? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Dang, gun, dang, gun, gang. Let me guess. Mysterium? My number 10 is Mysterium. That That's is a wonderful right. pick. Yeah, yeah. So this, I think, does a really, really nice job of kind of setting a nice atmosphere. Mm. Um, the cards themselves are very atmospheric, mm. of course, and they mm-hmm. a lot of them have kind of a spooky vibe, as you can see here. This is like a... A bit of a modern twist on, like, Clue. You know, if you're familiar with playing Clue back in the day, you're trying to figure out who done it. But you're trying to figure out who done it from a crime from many years ago. And so you're right. speaking with, communing with the ghosts who are trying to use nonverbal communication to get you to tell who did it with what weapon where. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's an update of that kind of Clue uh, feel. But a really, really cool game that I think does a very nice job, particularly through its art, of getting across the... Uh, yeah, th- this time of year, I don't know that I would call this as much like horror as I would more like I don't know what you call it, spooky or just it's atmospheric. Spooky, yeah, it's, not it's sort of like you know right. haunted house yeah. at Disney World kind of horror. Right, right. It's exactly. Like, ooh. It's nothing necessarily gory or or you know, but but no, it is right. atmospheric and 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 kind of it's Halloweeny. Halloweeny. But that's uh, a, that's kind of how you have to say. It. I'll say though, I do love the implications that come from this game when you're trying to uh, divine what is the uh, murder weapon Mm -hmm. and you see like knife, got it, (laughs) gun, got it, garden shears, Mm -hmm. clock, you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, this this paints a picture. Balloon. Balloon, yeah. 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 No, but to to my real point, you know, like, I I agree with that. It's it's less like, you know, horrifying, it's less horrific, but... It's about murder, death. It, yeah, it really is. is. It is. I think yeah. it's a great pick. <laughs> murder, you. death, kill. There's my number ten. Speaking of horrifying things, mm. my number ten is horrified. Oh my! Horrified <laughs> has those classic movie monsters in a really neat, uh, cooperative work together to scoot people around town who are very lost. Everybody's mm. always lost in this town, and so you need to show up and grab them by the arm and take them where they're trying to go as all of these monsters have descended onto one town. I've never seen this before. Mm. Uh, And they are, of course, going to be walking around messing with the players and messing with the townspeople. I really like the... This one is, again, sort of a good Halloween-y game. Right, right. Which is not scary... These movies just don't aren't, aren't really scary anymore. They don't hold yeah. up to, to that. But um, it feels spooky. Mm-hmm. You can set a couple of you know purple lights out, put on a little old timey music, and mm-hmm. enjoy the game for for that vibe for that setting. So um, yeah, this is a fun co op game. Uh, I think it slides easily into this list, and it's a it's a top pick for me if I want to play this kind of game on or during the Halloween season. This is a good one for that. It's also good in its weight because you can <coughs> play with younger people and older people and, and still kind of yeah, have this light, thing. It's light, it's easy, yeah. yeah. Could you it's imagine palatable. if this game came out like 60 or 70 years ago, though? You know what I mean? Like closer to when these movies were bigger, people would be just thrilled 
I mean, we, I still really like it. It's a mm. great game, but people back then would they'd probably have more of a connection to like, oh, I remember being frightened by this movie when you I know, was. You know, that actually here. brings up an inter. I wonder what's the oldest board game based off of any of these monster IPs are. That's a really interesting question. Like, did they make like kind of those mass market games over maybe? They must you have. You know, right? and Costello meets Frankenstein. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, board yeah, games have been around uh, longer than movies, so. There's gotta be yeah. board games about that. Yeah. Right. We have huh. to ask uh, Struvel. He would know. Heck yeah. All right. That's my ten. For me, number ten, like I said, this leans on the goofier side, especially when you look at the art. But mm -hmm. the theme of this is definitely uh, pretty horrific when you really get into the nuts and bolts of it. One that I got into because of you. Mm -hmm. That's Demon Worker. Oh, jeez. I haven't oh, talked about wow. this game in a while. Oh, wow. Demon Worker. He's got wow. the bright pink happy cover and everything. Mm -hmm. Look at the cute little, you know, uh, little cartoon drawn monsters and such. But the point of the game is you're doing a little worker placement game, has a fun, uh, unique system of worker placement where each of your workers has some different little ability or skill to them. And you're basically collecting uh, weapons. Malice and humans. Souls? Souls, yeah. Human Basically, souls. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're just, uh, you know, you're playing nice little characters like uh, Satan <laughs> or um, Beelzebub, right? Uh -huh. And you're just trying to kind of collect the most human souls. Yeah. If this isn't horror, in a cute little fun skin that I don't know what is. So, demon worker. Yeah, so the, the workers, like the, you know, you, like you said, you level up your workers so you get new workers and they'll be ghosts and whatever. But the starting workers are people... Who clearly are like chained and made to work for you as some gray, greater <laughs> right. evil being. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's dark when you stop yeah. and think about it. You you know if you just sort of go go about it, it's just tokens with symbols. But it's a messed up theme. Yeah. It, it is, and, and it's done in a funny way. But yeah. it's definitely. It's a, yeah, it's, it's dark. I do particularly like your choice of dice guy for this list as well. It's like death, murder, <laughs> mayhem, yay! That's a, that's a nice juxtaposition Please we're going to have for this Please entire list. Let me see this All right, yeah. so do we go right into Tom's and now? Tom, yeah, so Tom unfortunately right. had to, to bounce early to get right. to the World Series Let's of look at games. this horrible pick. What did Tom pick? His number 10, my uh, father's work. Haven't played it yet. I am very excited to play it, yeah. and you've played it. I have. Now, I'm going to spoil my list a touch in that I did not put this here. I suspect if I played it, he's played it more than I have. I only played it the one time. This is a great pick. This could, with repeated plays, end up as, like, the number one choice for this list. Gotcha. It's really, really atmospheric. Um, really it's really a Euro. Driven. It's a Euro game, like, through and through, but the story elements are really good and very well written. Um, so yeah, that is a good pick. As much as I would like to uh, mock Tom's pick, I cannot. Right. I feel like they'll get worse, his pick. I agree. But that, that sounds solid. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All right. All right, my number nine. So, Z, uh, we've already got a crossover. I figured, and we have, all discussed this, yeah. that we were probably going to have a lot of crossovers. Yes. I'm expecting eight crossovers I, among all of us. I, think I mean, least. a lot, I think. I, oh, are you including Tom's? Yes. Yeah, because I think there's, so. yeah, there's going to be a lot of crossover. Right. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so my number nine is is horrified. Nicely done. I didn't have a lot to say about it then because I knew I'd be you know talking about it here. But I don't need to belabor it. This is a good pick on your end. I think it's slightly better pick for me because I put it one higher. Yeah. And so yeah. it's clearly a better choice for me. Uh, you know, horrified again. The classic Universal movie monsters in a cooperative style. Again, what I do like about it is that many of these games that are on this list. You wouldn't necessarily want to play with younger kids, you know, for, for a right. number of different reasons. This is one that's family friendly in every sense of the word. It's not a complex game. Yeah. You can very easily tailor the difficulty if you play against one monster. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even younger kids can can kind of with some help be playing with it. And it's not going to be so frightening that it, you know, that it gives them nightmares or anything. Certainly not. Uh, but a really good choice for this list, I think. This game has one of the absolute most most interesting ways to scale difficulty. Yep. I agree. You know, that you just reminded me of the whole idea of you can play it with against as many monsters as you want. Mm -hmm. It's such a an interesting, clever way to change difficulty. Right. And each monster has a difficulty in and of itself. Yeah. So and you can nice sort of too. mix and match. But right. imagine, like, if you could play Pandemic and say, I want to play only against two diseases. Right. 
That's wild, you yeah, know, that you yeah. can change how difficult something is by doing that. It's a, it's a neat idea. It's a really good system, and and uh, I think they're going to continue. <clears throat> They've already made a, a second edition of this yeah, with the you yeah, know, American. American yeah. I think that they're going to continue on with this. Why wouldn't they? Why not, yeah. Yeah, I, I have to suspect they would. Mm -hmm. It's one of those games where the theme works so well with it that it wasn't until I played it three times that I was like, Oh, this is a pick up and deliver game. Yeah, right, right, like, right. I, I don't think of it mechanically because I'm just having so much fun kind of living in that world. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. All, All right, right, my number nine is a pretty horrific theme. Mm. But again, usually when I play it, it's very tongue in cheek. It's sort of, we handle it in a silly way. This is the Bloody Inn. Mm. And the Bloody Inn is set in, uh, I believe, France in the late 1700s or so. You are running an inn, and at that inn, Many people check in, very few check out. <laughs> uh, how's, how's that possible? They are moitered. Mm -hmm. Oh! Uh -huh. And buried yeah. under buildings. Yep. <laughs> As people come through your, uh, your inn, you can coerce them to help you, murder other people and rob from them. Mm -hmm. You can coerce them to help you bury bodies. You can pay them off. Or you can kill them and steal what they have and bury the bodies themselves. Mm -hmm. Choices, choices. I know. It's just, and so there's all these things. It's sort of multi-use cards is the central mechanism here. One thing I really, really like in games. Mm -hmm. And the theme, the idea behind what's going on is so incredibly morbid. <laughs> it really is. It's so dark. Yeah. And yet... People get into it because yeah. again, it's sort of removed. You don't show you any gore or anything. Right. It's just sort of a portrait of a person. You're like, yep, that that um, whatever they are, scientist is not going to make it. <laughs> oh, this person's <laughs> traveling through the country. They're never going to get there. Right. Um, yeah, it's just it's messed up. They Can you put imagine out... the Yelp reviews on this place if this oh, was around nowadays? Goodness, right? yes. You know what I mean? The smells. The smells. <laughs> um, they have internet. This is France in the 17th century. <laughs> Big kudos. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, watch out for the drinking water. Mm. They have an expansion to this, which I also thought was really fun. And again, adds a little more theme in there yeah. with a carnival going through town, and you can sure enough kill and bury those people. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really like this one. Mm -hmm. The Bloody Inn is fantastic, spooky fun. It Number is. nine. Very cool. Number nine for me is I almost picked a different game. The, the funny part of it is that that's one I hadn't actually played. But I, I watched a game of it being played, and I thought that it, it felt like I had played it. Okay. So I picked another game in his line. A line that came through this office, and we were surprised how fun oh, the games in this exactly line were. I know exactly what you're talking about. So the, my number nine pick is Let's Dig for Treasure. Mm. Which, you know, this is almost, it could be a stand-in for... Uh, for well, let's Summon let Demons. Let's Summon Demons, Demons. Demons. Demons is yeah. uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, both of which are, are silly, fun games. Let's Dig for Treasure is a push-your-luck game. Mm -hmm. You, as you can see in the art, are kids. Uh, what are you doing? You're just digging through the graveyard, right? As one is wont to do this time of year. Looking for things like dirt and worms and gold coins and old buried bottles of milk, which is worth extra points if you match it with old buried cookies, of mm -hmm. course. Cookies and milk. Yeah. Necronomicon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Necronomicon. You might find nuclear waste, <laughs> as you can see in the pictures. It's just... Yeah, we played this. The first time we played this was <laughs> some of the most fun we've had this year. Yeah. Because I remember you, Chris, you weren't even playing, right? At one or, or you sat down to play... After we played the other one, and you played, played this. Yeah. Demons, but we yeah. didn't look through the deck before we played. <laughs> we just started <laughs> right, flipping. Just started we just shuffled up and started yeah. flipping. And some of the stuff we found, as you start going through it, like, it'll lose that shock value sure, after sure. a while. But the first time, remember, like, second turn you had, you were like, The Ark of the Covenant! <laughs> <laughs> like, dug up the Ark of the Covenant uh -huh. in, the, in this uh, local neighborhood graveyard. Right. Uh, it's great. It's, pretty it's funny. very it's funny. Great. Some of the art in there is is it's comical, but it's still grotesque. There's you know uh, right. zombies and skeletons and stuff. It's it's fun, spooky silliness. Let's summon demons. Also, it yes. leans even more into the right. the evil, the evil stuff mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, this line of games is is funny, and I'm excited about the the next three that just got yeah. started. So yeah, that's my number nine spooky game. Let's dig for treasure. All right, now let's dig for trash. Tom's number nine. All right, excellent. Yeah, we're like raccoons just <laughs> pilfering through his garbage. Mall, Mall of, of Horror. horror. <laughs> Anyone played this? Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Um, 
This was a precursor to City of Horror. Oh, okay. And this was in the mall. You'd have uh, these locations in which everybody will go into. In these rooms, you negotiate. Mm-hmm. Because you can't all stay. There's not enough room. And you vote someone out. Okay. And then that person gets voted out into the center. New zombies show up. This is okay. I don't think it's aged very well. Mm. And I think City of Horror is a better game okay. that followed this. Mm. Okay. But this one's a little closer aesthetically and thematically to the old uh, Dawn, Dawn of, of the, the Dead, Dead. That's what it looks like, yeah. Sort of yeah. thing. So that's definitely what they were going for. All right. Ah, you can't find this thing anywhere. This is wild. I get accused of picking games that are out of print. Mm. Good luck <laughs> coming across a mall of horror in this day and age. Just go to your own shopping mall locally. Oh, that's even harder. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oof. Uh, it's, it's an okay pick. All right, my number eight, I um, almost didn't put on here because I'm like, is this really a horror game? But then the more I thought about it, this is absolutely a horror game. I don't know what else you would call this. It is a one versus many game where one player is playing one of the deadly sins. What game could this be, Z? Ticket to Ride? Correct. Ticket to Ride Hell is my number eight. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, my number eight is The Others. This is a uh, a big, lavish Simon production with a bunch of grotesque minis. Now, this one is gross, right? There's no two ways about it. This is one that is not for everybody because... It's not for kids. It's not. It's got some very grotesque miniatures and, and you know, even some of the subject matter, depending upon the group you're playing with, you may want to be careful about that. But, look, it's a, it's a very, very fun one versus many uh, kind of one of those games that can lead to stand up and cheer type moments where mm-hmm. you're rolling buckets of dice at the end and you've got these big climactic moments where you know you can win or lose on a, on a die roll um, but it's actually a very smart game too yeah. it, it 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 kind of belies how intelligent it is when you first see it on the table but after you get done playing it you're like man that game is slick it really is a slick game and it does very much play into this horror theme this one is going in, again more into the kind of the grotesque and and but mm-hmm. it's almost more like this big Big action movie more than anything else. It is. Um, Even the quotes in the book and stuff, like as you read the rule book, there will be quotes from like, you know, drop microphones places and yeah. things. Like, it's very, yeah, it's very um, cinematic, yes. action y movie, sort of guns blazing sort yeah, of stuff. But with a, with very much a, a horror framework. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was curious to figure out why you thought it might not. Well, just because, it just because of that action. I driving? guess it's because yeah, the, the game feels more like an action movie than a horror movie. But this is clearly again a horror theme. Absolutely, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So, not all of these games are going to feel like horror movies by any means. I mean, horrifying. Demon does Worker it, does. But yeah. Anyway, my number eight is the others. <laughs> all right, my number eight is a card game. A little bit like Smash Up, where you shuffle up a couple of things and then play, but with very much a terrifying theme. This is Sorcerer. It is a game rife with zombies and demons and werewolves and vampires and all sorts of evil stuff. In which, again, you have your own deck of cards and you try to control these different districts in um, turn-of-the-century London. Can I still say that phrase? Turn of the century? It's Yeah, it's a turn of a century. Yeah, but it no longer is the last no. turn of. Turn, I, I, it's a, yeah, this is know, set turn, around 1999. Yeah, turn of the century. Everyone was fearing Y2K. Question. I think it's because... Everybody of, knows what I meant. It be, because it's... Right. Because we're all living... Anyway. Yes, you can still it's say It's like, it. you know, late 1800s right. century or, mm. or London. That's what I meant. Obviously not late 1900s. No. Nah. Um... I, I like the the vibe here, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of mysterious, uh, creepy, dark alley stuff meets mm. top hats, meets uh, terrifying Egyptian overtones, all of that oh. stuff. You can kind of, you get that feeling, that flavor of this game is sort of Cthulhu adjacent. Okay. I really like it. I think the, the artwork here, I'm going to go ahead and say, out of everything I've got on the list, this is the most... Horrific artwork. Oh. Like the artwork in this game is 
terrifying. Uh, okay. It's very well done, incredibly mm. well done. If you don't like grotesque horror, very visceral sort of you know artwork, you probably won't like this one. It's the one I would caution you away from the most. Okay. But if you do like collectible card games and then sort of, you know, trading, that, that sort of feeling in a game, this isn't that, but it'll give you that vibe, it'll give you that feeling, that 1v1, my own deck versus yours, mm. attacking, defending, controlling, all of that. Really like this one, it's a neat idea. Uh, some dice rolling in there too. So yeah, Sorcerer is spooky, ter terrifying stuff, and a good game to boot, my number mm. eight. Very good. All right. You guys haven't played this one. I have not played not. that one. No, no. Not my not my typical style of game. I think it's yeah. because of the yeah. I don't typically go for those card games like that. You don't like, like the the trading card yeah. game sort of thing. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Some, they have to really impress me for me to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. so right. I'm, right. I'm reticent to try too many. My number eight is uh, a little bit historical as well. It takes place in the late 1900s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a game turn that, of the century. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turn of more recent century. <laughs> this actually is what that we played. Yesterday, by we, I mean some what? of us. What? Yeah, uh, it's almost like we focused on uh, uh, horror games for this. So, play yesterday. When we played yesterday, it's about making movies. Oh, Nightmare Productions. Wow, wow. really? Wow. I thought this goodness. is. I mean, because the focus of this, yeah, it's it's an auction game. Mm -hmm. It is by no means a, a typical horror mechanism. Right. But you're making horror movies. You that are. is the whole um, point of the game. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah. And and we hammed it up when we play, but you do that I think almost every time, right? My movie is called Zombie Slasher Kitten, mm -hmm. and it stars you know these people it has a, an orchestral score written by someone with zero stars. So right. It's got the worst score imaginable. <laughs> you're talking about horror movies the whole time that you're playing this, and whether you enjoy that, you know whether you enjoy watching them or not, you know what a dumb bad horror movie looks like. Right. And so I think that it, it's it's fun. This is, like I guess, on the sillier side of things. Before my list becomes more atmospheric, mm -hmm. becomes more horrific. But this is a great horror theme game. It's a great game, right? It, I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's yeah. the key is that it's a great game. And when I heard they were re theming it to this, <laughs> obviously with this company, it makes sense. I was like, oh yeah, that's great. That's a, that's a you know that'll be a very organic re theme, right? right? It's always been right. about making movies. This is just about a specific genre of movies. Yeah. Works and I, great. And I think if you have a buddy who says, oh, I love horror movies. I mm -hmm. love watching old slasher films right. and just dumb, you know, and they know horror movie directors, you know, like the back of their hand. This is a great game to play with them because right. it's not that difficult. It is... Uh, but also that theme will really get people into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. You can invite George Romero and Sam Raimi over to your house and play a game of Nightmare Productions. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. They would love it, I bet. I bet they actually. would, actually. Yeah. I bet they would love it. <laughs> so there you go. Number eight, Nightmare Productions. Mm, what do we got for Tom? Mm, All right. Tom um, went with, after Mall of Horror, he's saying The, the Night Cage. Cage. Okay. Ah, this is one this I never an tried. interesting choice. I don't know The Night Cage. This is one where I think... The players have to do a little bit of the heavy lifting. I oh, think the boy. you know this is one of those games uh, where you are. It's definitely it works for a horror theme. I mean, I, I'm not pushing back against that at all. But it's very almost abstract to me. You know, where you are play, placing out tiles and and you're collectively cooperatively trying to get keys to get exits, but you can't always see. Um, I'm trying to remember the mechanism. Can't I'm, tell what I'm looking. It just so looks it, like laying tiles. This looks are. like this looks like. Black and white patchwork. Right. Well, what is this? No, you well, are you are you are trapped basically, and you're trying to you know in you you can't see. That's the whole idea. Is you can only see a little bit ahead because you've got like a candle, I think, and your candle can even go out. And mm. so, no, nah, I mean, it's, you, yeah. I think the hook of it, the the horror thing of yeah. it, is that as you move in, it's like a fog of war. You start right. losing you the start previous losing tiles. The things behind you, yeah. And when you try to backtrack, you have to place out different tiles. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the thing changes around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the horror hook of it. Right. That's you, not normal. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 a good game, and it's, a, it's an intriguing kind of uh, play on the, the cooperative game, but uh, it's a little abstracty. I mean, I can see him putting on the list, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go. I've never played it, and mm -hmm. I trust Tom's opinion mm. uh, implicitly. Mm. I think this is a terrible pick. Is he afraid of afraid of no caves? No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. What am I gonna call? Ghostbusters. We're gonna go with that again. That was our number eight.
All right, my number seven is a game that, while I still like the game, it's almost more out of a sense of nostalgia. I don't know that I'm going to come back and play this game too much more often, but I had so many great play sessions of it, and I really do feel like it fits in this list. It was one of the first games I thought of. Okay. Um, my number seven is a zombie game. Called Zombies! Exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark. mark. That game would not find its way anywhere near this list. <laughs> um, my number seven is Dead of Winter. Um, and, and this is a game that, uh, again, I don't see myself coming back to this very often, but I think it does a very good job with this idea of not only having a horror theme, because you've got the zombies, right, which is clearly mm -hmm. a, hor a horror theme, but it also, through its mechanics, through its mechanisms, tries to evoke a sense of distrust of the players right. around the table. Right. And that's something that you commonly see in horror movies, right? It's like, can I really trust the people around me? So I think they do a good job of kind of creating this unease around the table. That's, I think, the closest that board games can get, is creating a sense of unease or unexpected, that type of a thing. Yeah. Uh, and this does that, I think. It, it creates this little bit of a, you know, can I really trust this person? You know, the zombies are there, but the zombies are not the focus in this game. Much like they say in, in uh, Walking Dead, the, the, the comic and in the TV show, that, yeah, the zombies are horrific, but really the more horrific things are the humans, right? right. And how they interact with this, you know, end of the world type of a situation. It's the same thing here. It's like it's kind of saying, like, we're the real horror here. The real f monsters were the friends we made along the way. That's correct. The real monsters are the people sitting at this table, other than me. I'm a delicate flower. My number seven, <laughs> Dead of Winter. I really thought about this, and like you said, um, this is one that's kind of nostalgia for me. Yeah. But it's I just I don't like it enough at this point right. to to for it to make my list. But man, yeah. is it cinematic sometimes. Yeah. It's yeah. so it's it when it's good, it's so good. Yeah, I agree. I had some great sessions of it. I never got into that mm. one, so I really didn't think about it. Mm. My number seven is. Uh, a terrifying theme. The game itself has a scary idea, and it can be a little scary at the end. Mm. But it's mostly the, the setting and the idea. This is a spelunking game. Ah, I figured this would make your list. Called mm -hmm. A game in which you and a group of friends go spelunking, you lose your way down there, you need to find your way out, and you quickly realize you are not alone down in these caverns. There are lots of things down there trying to hinder you. Mm. Things like failing flashlights and pockets uh, of gas and that sort of thing. And also creatures, like monstrous evil creature things, oh. which will chase you down. They're sort of just, gen they're called horrors. You don't, you don't quite even know what they are. And so you're discovering, you're doing this whole kind of like the night cage, except things don't, you know, vanish before you. Mm -hmm. Finding paths, climbing, throwing robes and climbing up and trying to get out. Eventually, you run through a deck of cards that signifies your flashlight dying. Mm. And when that flashlight dies, you're not done yet. Not, maybe not. <laughs> but then at the end of every round, you need to make a die roll. You're completely in the dark at this point. If you pass that die roll, you get to take your next turn. Mm. If you do not pass that die roll, you are consumed by the monsters in the darkness. That's fantastic. And so the game is usually balanced on like a razor's edge and at the end you have this fantastic cinematic moment of flashlight just ran out i think i can get out in like two or three turns <laughs> we got if i last. pass these two three checks i can get out i can climb my way to this exit and get out sometimes you do it sometimes you don't sometimes you need to turn around and go help someone who fell Drag them back up and run with them. And so the whole thing that. is just very movie-like. I, mm. I, I enjoy it very much. The rules complexity is is light. Mm -hmm. It's sort of pandemic-esque. Okay. But thematically, it is so captivating. I really like this one. So Subterra, love it. Just just a fantastic co-op game. My number seven. All right. Very cool. I'll have to try. It. I'll really have to try. It's that really fun it's... stuff. Uh, no, number seven, like I said, this is still on the less um, atmospheric side of my list, but this is one that if you, when you kind of think about it, you put yourselves in the position of the people, the characters in the game. Mm. It definitely is a horror, uh, a whole horror setting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Battleship. Mm. Battleship. <laughs> that would be. 
I That'd guess. Be, that yeah. scary, right? You hear yeah, a booming but... voice in the sky. <laughs> B7. <laughs> you look up at your bunk number. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is one of the most fun kids games that I've played. Mm. Uh, it's called Zombie Kids Evolution. Oh. I really Ooh. love this one. You're, you're trapped in the school, you and up to three friends, and you're cooperatively trying to lock the gates on the outside of the school. Uh, to do so, you have to put yourself in the right position and spend enough number of actions. Very, very simple, lightweight game, but the uh, the the evolution part of it is a legacy game. This is a oh, good okay. kid's legacy game. So the zombies become harder. Uh, they become special abilities and stuff. But the, the, the setting of it is what's so fun, is you're kids at a school. So the zombies are the people at the school. They're the staff, they're the janitors, they're the principal mm -hmm. and whatnot. Checks out. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I think if you put yourselves in that position, that would be quite horrifying. Right. To me, this is a horror game kind of in the sense, if you ever watch the show Community, they do those paintball episodes. And the paintball episodes are so great because it'll be like a western. This is a comedy show about a couple of dudes and bros at a community college. And then they have a really cinematic western episode. Uh, a lot of these are directed by the Russo brothers, actually, mm. who did like Endgame and Captain America Winter, so uh, Winter Soldier. Wow. So they have this like really cinematic, great scope of this Western movie at like a, a paintball challenge in a mm. community college. And that's mm. what this is like for me. This is like a, a horror survival game set in this cute little kind of school setting. But I really like huh. it a lot. Interesting. All Legacy, right. huh? That's yeah. interesting. Is it resettable, Legacy? No, once you've played through, you've played through it. Wow, okay, um, okay. But it's pretty affordable. They're making a... a um, there's you guys a follow yeah, yeah, There's a follow-up right? coming right. out yeah. too that I'm very interested okay. in. So yeah, I like this little family of games a lot. It's right. so my number seven, Zombie Kids Evolution. Let's see what Tom has to say. Hmm. Probably Zombie Kids Evolution. Oh! <laughs> we can't all right. pick all we got, that. We got a three-way crossover Three-way so crossover far. on so that, far. yes. Okay. And, and I have a strong sense this is going to make its way on the People's Choice, too. We'll find out. I, I, I put together the People's Choice PowerPoint, Shh. and I don't remember. Okay. I have a feeling it will. <laughs> I, I have a strong I sense it will. I think so, too. Yeah. You know what's weird that, mm -hmm. it, that made none of our list so far, anyway? Mm -hmm. Horrified American Monsters. Yeah. The newer, more readily available version of this game. It is. No one picked. No, I, I and still... And I suspect it won't be on the People's Choice. I don't choice. think so. Yeah, I think Horrified is... The original here is still the more popular. It's more too. iconic. It is it's more, more iconic, iconic yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. to be fair, I like the cryptids. I do more, right? Than you know, Bride of Frankenstein sure. and the Mummy or whatever. This is just—it's iconic. Yeah, if you yeah. grew up with those movies. Yeah. But I'm in my 30s. I didn't. <laughs> um, and yet, for some reason, this one just being first, I guess, yeah, is I think uh, so. just—it's the one people latched onto. Right. The follow-up. Didn't have that sort of attraction. Not quite the impact. Yeah. The impact, yeah. Hmm. All right, number seven. All right. All right, my number six is a game that... Um, you know, I said that board games just inherently, it's difficult to, to kind of get fear out of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's true. But one way you can ramp that up, one way that you can kind of uh, elevate that fear factor is to have an app integration, right? Because you can have sounds and you can have, you know, even screams or what have you, things along those lines. So my number six is Mansions of Madness. And uh, I'm not even going to say, we were, Tom was talking about this the other day. I think it was Tom. He's like, do we even need to say second edition anymore? I don't know if we do. I don't. I, Mansions of Madness. Now, I don't think you can find the first edition. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah right, right. right. And, and, but Mansions of Madness, the edition you can get, this one here, is the one that is app integrated to kind of, you know, it, it definitely adds to that atmospheric situation where you can, uh, you know, feel the fear a little bit. There's a little bit of an actual kind of you know, heart racing, uh, you know, that can happen. It doesn't happen with every scenario, and some, I think, are a little bit more horrifying than others. But, you know, this is the Cthulhu mythos, right. and, and uh, you know, so it very clearly is going for a horrific, uh, you know, feel, vibe, uh, atmosphere, and it does a good job of it. It is not a game I play very often because it is quite long. It's long, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that's, the uh, that's the main issue, but... If you are going to have a night, right, built around Halloween or something along those lines, and you're having a bunch of friends over, and you're going to play for three or four hours, 
this is your centerpiece game, yeah, right? You all sit, better. you play a game of Mansions of Madness, you you lower the lights a little bit, maybe you have, even especially if you can get the app like on a big screen or something, or you know loud, what I mean? Loud yeah. speaker yeah, system. Yeah, really, so really kind of, <laughs> right. Yeah. Goom, goom, goom. Yeah, 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 I mean, that could really create a cool vibe and a great atmosphere and make it an event. So, Mansions of Madness, I think, is uh, yeah. really good for that. There's a lot of games that I thought when we discussed this topic, I was like, that's probably going to be like my number one game. Yeah. And a lot of them ended up not actually making the list. Because really? I, yeah. Wow. I was like, oh, obviously Mysterium. Yeah. And then I, as, I was, as I was kind of configuring it, they just kind of like fell yeah. off. And I, you know, I wanted to, for my taste, have other games yeah. you know, higher up. But this is one that was awful close for me. All right. All right. Hmm. Huh. All right. My number six is very similar to Mike's, uh, except it's the second edition. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, of Mansions of Madness. Oh, you went with the second edition. I went with the second oh, okay. edition. Okay. Mansions of Madness second edition mm. has an app oh. uh, that integrates with the board game and it runs a lot of it for you. Interesting. Where you don't have to have a friend stand on the side and make scary noise. Bang! Boo! <laughs> Boo spooky! <laughs> the app will make these exact noises yeah. I'm making for you now. <laughs> Blah! Roll the dice! But <laughs> uh, everything Mike said, uh, but more eloquently, ah. the end. <laughs> That's my number six. All right. Okay. Uh, for my number six, like I said, this list starts turning more uh, atmospheric. The, you know, moving a little bit w uh, more away from zombie kids. Uh, but this one is still uh, still not quite going to pack the punch. I think a lot of people expect from a horror games list. Okay. But I like the setting of this solo game a lot. Another one that I got into because of you. Solo. Solo game. Trapped in a mirror dimension. Looking for doors. You're kidding me. No. You're kidding me. Oh, Naira, man. Come on. Really? Even I didn't put this on the list. Wow. <laughs> what? It's a great, great little game. Sure. I, I like the game a ton. I play the app of it. The scariest lot. thing about this game is the shuffling. Am I right? The shuffling. Oh! <laughs> you see? You shuffle a lot in this game. Uh, low-hanging fruit. <laughs> oh, the, the board I will pick low-hanging low fruit all day. I'll engorge <laughs> myself with low-hanging fruit. Go ahead. You'll just walk right into the tree and eat it. Yes. Yeah. No, this, man style. This, <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is a strange one, but I love the the art, the aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, even just the production when you open up the box and it's got the little like uh, little cartoon demon yeah, thing yeah. with the arms folded over. You kind of you know this yeah. just everything about the experience of this is is nice. It's a very simple kind of abstract or uh, solitaire card game type mm -hmm. of a thing, but I, I like the setting. I like the idea that it's a it's an artistic endeavor. You're looking for doors to escape this mirror dimension. You're yeah. There are different challenges you can throw into it that make it more tough, and you're just sitting there. Yes, you joke that there's a lot of shuffling in the game, but when the when the deck starts getting thin, and yeah. you know, like. Like, I don't know if it's... it's all right, let's just keep going. So they cannot hear us at all or see us right now? Well, it switched to my... Let's go back uh -huh. to the part where Mike agreed with me. Yeah. <laughs> Are we back? Yep. Fantastic. We're back, baby. Chris, that's a horrible pick. The no, stream didn't even write the pick. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's, I, 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 I understand what you're getting at. Okay. Yeah. We're that's gonna interesting. That it's an started. interesting pick. I can see where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. This you said something that sort of makes me. Uh, you said it was an artistic endeavor. I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to me, this game kind of feels like an indie movie. Yeah. To like the Mansions of Madness blockbuster. Yeah. Sure. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right, right. That's true. Like Mansions of Madness is clearly from like Michael Bay. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hit the middle of summer. You're right. It's like at the budget of you know fifteen on Irons, right, right? Right. Yes. Right. But this one tries to do something. Where you're not sure you understand what's happening in the movie, it's very artsy. Sure. It's the kind of it's an art house board game. Mm. There you go. Right? Mm. Yeah. And so uh, that's that's uh, that's a neat idea. I think yeah. that that's cool. There All you right. go. So that's my very correct number six on Iram. Very yeah. correct. Let's take a look at some incorrect. Yes, it's so easy to have to have a punching bag. Oh, oh man. Why? Okay, this is the faceless. 
There's a face right there. What do you mean? This mm -hmm. is the faceless, and you know what? Um, we're going to skip this because it may show up on someone else's list later. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll come back to the faceless. Okay, let's come okay. back to the faceless. Are you sure that's the faceless? I'm 100% sure. That that's looks the a little yeah. bit like, uh, like the night full. cage with color. We'll come back to the face. We'll let's, call that one face full. I'll say that uh, old faceless. Tom made a good a good pick, but uh, too too high in the list. Okay, we'll come back to the faceless because somebody needs mm. to talk about the faceless mm -hmm. later. We'll come back to the face <laughs> yeah. later on. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go back to facelift. My number five is, is face a crossover. <laughs> Play it straight, Mike. My number five is a crossover. Is it uh, Manchester of Mattis again? No. It's Oniro. No, it's not Oniro. My number five is the Bloody Inn. Yes, Hell of course. Oh. Z, the Bloody Inn. Yes. Demons. This one is, um, you know, obviously thematically is it's you know very morbid like you said turn of the century right of course and and we, we you, we've talked about this a lot so i don't need to talk too much more about it but i will just make a shout out for the artist weberson santiago which i think was an inspired choice for this game <laughs> yes. you could have I, and, and i'm being i may be a little bit of hyperbole but not much i think this game would have been significantly less enjoyable with goofy cartoony art there's something about this artwork which is both disarming right. and silly. Right. And also, if you let it, very spooky. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's unnerving. Creepy. It's unnerving. I right. think unnerving you, is right. a good way to put it. It, yeah. it really yeah. is. His artwork is slightly off. It's just I'm not a sure bit off. that Weberson Santiago is not a serial murderer. <laughs> I guess is what uh -huh. I want to say. Yeah. I'm also not not sure. Right. Well. Yes, mechanically the game is very solid, so I enjoy it as a card game, but I do feel like the art is a huge, huge benefit to it. It really sells this game as a whole package, and I don't know what's happening over here. That was a great pick for Z, a better pick for me again, because it's higher on my list. Who's doing that? You seeing this? My number five, The Bloody Inn. Maybe you shouldn't have copied his list and just Correct. made all the no, numbers. Gonna, whatever your number 12 was is going to be my number three. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. All right, where are we at? Number five? five. My number five is a game I like to call Claustrophobia 1643. Ooh. This is a two-player miniatures dungeon crawly kind of game in which one side is humans. Good old uh, thrown in jail humans who get sprung from jail for the epic fight against demons that is to take place underneath the city. Oh, this is Suicide Squad, the board game. Kind mm. of, like, you know, uh, turn of the century Suicide Squad. That's the phrase <laughs> of the day. Turn of the century. Mm. One side, against again, plays these humans with one central figure being the, the blessed one. One that has sort of, you know, angelic powers in a way. Mm. And then the other player has Endless uh, hordes of troglodytes and demons and hellhounds and crazy things mm. that they're throwing at the humans trying to take them out. There will be mission based, so you're either trying to, as humans, just find an exit, plant an explosive, find a specific location, go in there and rescue something and get out again, whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of, it's, it's a fast moving, very atmospheric, as you've been saying, enjoyable creepy game the setting is a little like subterra yeah but again it's like a period piece subterra it's overtly demonic i mean mm. so again if that is going to bother you be aware like this is demonic as it gets you mm. are one side is literally playing demons um clashing against one another i i think it's very well done it's a fast moving game too mm. this game can be 45 minutes wow so for a dungeon crawl exploratory game that plays in 45 minutes or so an hour yeah. maybe it's a fantastic pick one of my favorite dungeon crawling games and definitely horrific yeah this makes it onto a number of your list i do need to play this one of these days i think you're you'd really really I like bet i would this. dig it everything yeah. you've said about it makes me think i would like it because this same, is same. uh yeah because mechanically it's sound yeah asymmetric mm -hmm. but mechanically very clean and sound mm. 
with then a nice theme on right. top of that. Right. I think you'd like this a lot. Yeah, I, I like that idea of, of having a dice pool and then allocating it. It's yeah. kind of confrontational. Yeah, that sounds like the way that I want to do a more confrontational game. Mm. Yeah, if you like the others, which yeah. again has that that theme, that vibe, right. that feeling, but you can look under the hood and see that it's it's chugging along nicely, I think you'll like this too. All right, okay. All right. There you go, my number Down. five. All right, well, my number five, speaking of the others, is Yeti and my spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, so I saw someone put that up there. Yeah, no, someone said that. Yeah, no, yeah. my number five is the others. Oh, there you go. I hope it's the others. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is the other one. <laughs> this is uh, but better than you, Mike, because it's yeah, higher. I guess. I, I, I guess so, right? And Mike, I defy you to disagree with me on this one. I disagree with you on this one. All right, it's well. a terrible pick. Who would put this on their list? I, I really enjoy this one. Yeah. Everything you just said, actually just said about the whole idea of. You got that cool spooky horror, you know, awful, um, you know, gross miniatures and stuff. Yeah. You, you look at it and you th assume it's kind of a dumb game. I assumed that it was just like a uh, big dumb game. Right. But you look under the hood. Everything is is working really well. Uh, I like the little bit of dread that you get particularly um, as, as we're moving into the topper part of my list here. Top or my mm, well, the upper top part of my or, list here. Part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these games do something, I think, which which do evoke a little bit of more of that fear. Mm -hmm. And in this one versus many game, if Mike is the the other, the, 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 sins the player. sin player, mm -hmm. in between each of our turns, he can choose to activate or not. My reaction cards. He has a few reactions. <laughs> and if I'm playing the sin, you better believe I'm holding these cards at all times, and I'm giving you these every so often. Little flinches, I'm doing right. this. Yeah. What are you going to do? You gonna do oh, <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> Where are you going to put that? Yeah, put it right there. Put it. I'm doing that. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's the scary. Part. That's the part <laughs> that I think whole that idea really... is very scary. Yeah. Mike at the gaming table, <laughs> yeah. flinching. Right. But yeah, so that'll that <laughs> that alone, t you know, just really brings it up high. It does. In that you're sitting there with a lot of angst, right? Of what's that bad guy going to do? And it's a bad guy with a brain. Well, right. not in my case. But <laughs> normally, it's like Woo! A, it's a it's you know, it's not just a game working against you. It's a game with an actual person behind it working against right. you is what a one versus all can do. Mm -hmm. This one pulls that off really well. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So that's my number five, The Others. All right, Tom, what do you have? It better be The Others. Night of the Living Dead, the Zombicide yeah. game of this that. This is a good choice, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, have either of you played this version of it? I have played I no zero interest. Zombicide. Yeah. I, now, it's interesting you say that because I also have very little interest in most Zombicide games, but I think this one did a very, very good job of evoking the theme of this movie specifically because they actually have scenarios that are kind of based off of different scenes out of the movie, mm -hmm. and so you can kind of relive it. It's that zombie side system, which we say that a lot, it's a very simple system, right? Yeah. There's not a lot mechanically going on there, but it also means that it can be utilized in a lot of different ways. This is a good utilization of it. I don't want to come across as uh, not being interested in Zombicide. I'm, right. I like Zombicide games. I'm not interested in Night of the Living Dead Zombicide. Mm. It's like the same reason I'm not interested in Rear Window, the board yeah. game. It's, mm. you know, I'm. I have no attachment to that. Okay, okay. This is so incredibly old, this movie. Yeah, but it's so interesting because... It's a cult it, classic, and it, I get all of and that. And it's about zombies. It's about I, zombies, you know, though, right. absolutely. But, yeah, just when this was announced, I checked out immediately. Okay, yeah. It's like, I, I oh, think this okay. is probably, yeah, I think this is maybe more for fans of the movie yeah. than fans of Zombie Side. That's yeah. probably fair. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. I'm annoyed with Tom. He took something of yours? I'm very annoyed with Tom. You thought you were going to have something very unique. I was you? like, folks, buckle up, because I'm going to turn you on to a game you've probably never heard of before, but is really, really good for this list, and Tom ruined it by putting the faceless up already. My number four is the faceless. This game, it's really unique. Uh, it utilizes magnets and literal compass. Uh, in the game, and that's why you can kind of see that little compass right there. So it's it's almost a Stranger Things vibe where one of your friends, you're playing as children and you're kind of moving around the outside of this board, and one of your friends has gotten lost, and you have to try to kind of find them and, and rescue them, but there's this creature that is out there trying to catch your, your, your friend. And there's magnets built into the bases of all of, of these figures. And so 
depending upon where you move them, it's going to move that actual compass in the center that's going to determine where the baddie moves. So you can kind of manipulate your characters around the outside of the board to kind of manipulate where the bad guy goes. It's really interesting. It's mm. a cooperative game. Um, it's uh, very, very horrific in its look, of course, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's a relatively, uh, you know, ra relative. Wow, relatively abstract cooperative game. But okay. the, the horror theme is definitely put through with the art and the yeah, idea. It's got a creepy, like it's got a very creepy Slender look Man to it. vibe yeah, happening. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm. But it's a really. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games where you put it on the table and people walking by are going to be like, "What is going on there?" Um, because it just looks so striking, and as soon as they notice that you've got magnets going on, that people love magnets. <laughs> yeah, it's such a, you know that's, a mean? Yeah. that's a hook. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's got a couple of things working against it. Number one, it's got a weirdly shaped box, which I know throws off a lot of people, and it's not easy to get a hold of either. I think it was a yeah. Kickstarter only. A lot of people, um, a lot of people don't like mixing technology and with your board games mm. because one, what happens in 10,000 years when your magnets when your magnets, out? yeah, exactly. You have to recharge them. You have to go down to the South Pole and recharge them. Got it, yeah. Yeah, and the line for that this time of year is terrible. <laughs> All right, my number four, what? and Tom's number whatever it was. What? Faceless, the faceless. My number four is Arkham Horror, the card game. Mm. Das Kartenspiel. Das Kartenspiel in the Horror. <laughs> this one uh, we just played yesterday as well, actually. Um... It is a scenario. We played a, great game we of it. Played a very <laughs> got, got. well balanced game of Arkham Horror, the card game, mm. yesterday. Triumph was had. And by triumph, I mean we got punked, and that was a triumph. <laughs> yeah, Ashton Kutcher just jumped out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. Bam! <laughs> yep. Uh, this one manages to do a lot with just cards, pretty much, and a few tokens. It is. Uh, a good combination of scenario building, story driven uh, content choices, reading, you know, finding things, exploring, discovering. But again, it manages to boil all that down, things that bigger board games sometimes struggle to do, into just cards. And those cards can function as locations, can function as levels in a building can function as trains, you know, train cars in a train, or the entire cities in a big map. So the scope is sort of very adjustable that way. And then, of course, you have your own deck of cards with your weapons, your spells, your know-how, your skills, your savvy, whatever. I really like the way this comes together. It's a co-op game, and, and it just it feels... Like, out of the gate, you can play this game twice and, and sort of dawns on you the, the design space that exists, mm, even if you haven't yeah. plumbed that depth yet. Yeah. It's so intoxicating to play with something and go, man, there's so much they could do. I want to see what else they have done. And there's a lot there already. So, yeah, this is a fantastic card game. You can solo it. You can We, we played three-player. Um, it's just fun spooky stuff with very good Lovecraft-esque writing mm. in it. So that is my number four, Arkham Horror, the card game. Now, so you'll notice that I didn't, I don't have a lot to say right now because I'm going to talk about this one shortly. Okay. My number four is Arkham Horror, the card mm. game. Shortly is very quick indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, since, we, since we started playing this one, mm -hmm. uh, I... I really like this. This might be now my favorite of the Arkham Files games. You know, um, like I said, with Mansion of Madness, like I really consider that one. It's a, it's such an easy, quick one to to. to and jump we're all to. fans of Elder Sign too, for that matter, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that's mm -hmm. another good one. Yeah. And so, um, Elder Horror is one of my first big games that I got mm -hmm. into uh, when I got into the right. hobby ten years ago. Uh, I like so much of that that series, but this one is is the most robust. It has the most space in which to work because you as a as a character are 30 cards or more. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than like your normal kind of card and a miniature you move around or something. Mm. You're just so varied and the, the the maps and the scenarios and and the objectives are so varied. Uh, but my my favorite which really which like I said as we as we're moving up here um, I wanted these games to give more of a sense of dread. And I loved one of the scenarios that we played where locations didn't have um, 
lo a lot of the times the, you know, there's like a virtual map that you're setting these cards out. This goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. Mm -hmm. But they started kind of changing around. Places would, would blip in and out of existence, and so the map became very disorienting, mm -hmm. and you're sitting there trying to like scrape and and crawl and find a way out and I just that was one of my favorite scenarios in any game that I've played. I thought that was so cool what you can do in this game. So yeah. a lot of great reasons you mentioned, uh, just a little bit to add to that Arkham Horror the card game. Uh, so so great for the, especially this theme. Yep. There you go. All right, Tom beat that. <laughs> and no. no, it's going to be some d dorky. He doesn't. Ultimate Werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he had some great ways in which he was going to say this is involves people and brings people together or some such trash. Um, <laughs> no. Here's uh, what I have to say. Everyone, close your eyes. Now go to sleep because yeah. this game is boring. Oh, I get it. Got him, Mike. You got him. Oh, that's great. I Ghostbusters. Do wish, I do <laughs> I wish Tom Brady to defend himself. Yeah. I do, too. He might actually just, even though we're sharing this list, he might make his own video. Because mm -hmm. I do want to hear his thoughts on this. Yeah. Because I, I have no interest in playing Werewolf again. But Look, know, I, the I, one I, thing about Werewolf that it has going for it is the... You, you can sort of ramp up spooky using yeah. Werewolf... A lot. You There's can. almost no upper, no upper end because the game is barely there. Right, right. It's it's really so about... you could like have every player dress up like a villager sure, sure, sure. from the 1600s mm -hmm. and have only candlelit space right. and some creepy drummer in the back <laughs> and the smell of wet dog in the air. Like you could <laughs> take this up to an 11. You could, and and, and when somebody dies, you could like. When everybody's eyes are closed, drag them out of the room and splash blood on the chair that they were in. You could do that, mm -hmm. and it makes it terrifying, in right. fact. This is Werewolf Masterpiece Theater. Yeah, 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 right. You could do that, but you also could just be like, everybody close your eyes, pay the table so nobody can hear you. Right. It, it yeah. doesn't always it doesn't. bring it. But can, this, what, it, what it does do, I think, is it does some of the things I was talking about with Dead of Winter, is that it does evoke this, who can I trust... That yes. type of thing. Yeah. It's really more about setting a group dynamic. This is a game about the group dynamic more than it is about the game. The right. narrator makes or breaks the experience, not the mechanism. I agree, yeah. So you could have great games of Werewolf and yeah, not so great games. We have a robust Werewolf we do. group and everything. So I, mean, I, I, I get that, right? I've probably played in a lot of not very exciting groups where the, the narrator is like, Okay, I'm going to close your eyes. All right, point really quick. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you're, yeah. you're, you want more... I keep saying atmosphere, but mm -hmm. that's what you need out of Werewolf to make it exciting. I agree. Yeah. 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 All right, number four. My number three is a game that just keeps on giving. It's a game that um, I liked it when I first played it. And it has just grown in my estim estimation. You know, some games, you know, kind of lose steam over time. This one continues to pick up steam. We actually, I'm not, didn't pick it for this reason, but we're going to be premiering a video tomorrow, a game and talk for my number three, which is Cthulhu Death May Die. Yes. And uh, you do want to tune in for that. Uh, Chris, as always, did yeoman's work on the editing for this. We played, a uh, right? we played a great uh, session of this with the huge Cthulhu. Um, but this is another game where I wouldn't say that horror is the is you know necessarily what is leading with, but it is certainly a horrific. You know, anytime you have Cthulhu, that's going to be a horror theme. This one's a little tongue in cheek. It isn't really it? is. This is pulpy. Yeah, that's a yeah. better way to put right. put that. Th this it's is pulpy pulp, horror. This is pulp horror. This idea of like <laughs> we're all going to go crazy anyway. Right. Let's blast them away, folks. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's right. pulpy. Yeah. I remember at Dice Tower convention uh, when they announced this game, they being Eric uh, Lang and Rob Davio, I think they were both there talking about it. Either either they both or just Eric was there. And they were saying basically they wanted this to be a game where as an, an investigator you don't feel helpless. 
you're going up and you're punching Cthulhu in the face, mm-hmm. right? That's kind of what they wanted this experience to be, and that's what they, that's what it does. Right. You don't you know you don't feel helpless. Now you you very well might lose because it's not an easy game. Sure. But you don't start off as this weakling. I mean, you're able to do damage right away, and as you get more and more insane as a as a you know a, a mechanism, you get even more and more powerful, and you're doing these crazy crazy moves towards the end of the game. So it builds up to a nice kind of cinematic It definitely ending. crescendos, for it sure. It does. It does. And yeah. it's a game, like I said, that it is very... Uh, a, it's a game that you can take in a lot of different directions with the different scenarios mm-hmm. because basically you're picking a, a great old one and you're picking a scenario and you're mashing them together and the mixture of those things creates nice... where the core mechanisms that are very simple to understand but create new, unique feels to it you know maybe you have to worry about fire this time yeah. maybe you have like a more you know a more overt timer you have to deal with any number of things uh they, they've gone in some neat directions with this game i hope they continue to add to it i don't know if they are but i would love to see a season three on this i really would I know they mm-hmm. did the when they did those comic books they did yeah they put out a few extra they characters did. i would love to see more of that kind of right. thing for that'd be good mm-hmm I don't know. I suspect this one wasn't a big, big hit. Yeah, so. I almost wonder, though, is this going to be a slow burn? Like, this is a game that people still like now. Yeah. I think they like it more than when it was first released. Yeah, That might yeah. be true. So, anyway, there's my number three, Cthulhu Death May Die, and check out our Game & Talk tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. 4 o'clock. 4 p.m. Yeah, that'll Eastern. be actually be the, the capstone of the of the Autumn Spectacular. Outstanding. There you go. All right, folks, my number three is a crossover with... Chris, I think, is the only one who said it? Mm, No, you said it. You said it. Tom hasn't said it. Mm. The Others Ah, is my number three. Again, you guys have both talked about this, how it's mentioned the whole under the hood mechanically. It's very robust. It's spooky. It's horrific. It's it's grotesque. Um, It also moves along at a nice clip, though. It does. This is a game that ramps up nicely you want that feeling of very quickly leveling up and getting stronger and this one does something that very few games of this type do and that is the the small world thing i'll call it in which you have your it's you as one of the good guys you have your character and you very quickly become corrupt and become you're a monster and then you pop <laughs> and so then you grab another one, mm-hmm. and you begin as that character now. You'll do that twice, maybe three times throughout the game. But that's a nice cyclical feeling right. of having your character and not being so incredibly concerned that you're going to die and have to stop playing that you take no risks. Right. In this game, you're going to take some risks. Yeah. You'll be like, um, yeah, I'll become voluntarily corrupt to roll more dice. Yeah, 100%. Fine. Yeah. Here we go. Brah. Oh, I died? Oh, no. Okay, well, I'm going to be uh, this one now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll be that one. That's a great feeling. It is. You know? Um, but it's also a loss condition. It is. So you can't be willy-nilly about it. But no. You, yeah, so it's a nice push-pull. It just feels good to to bite it one time and not be eliminated from a game. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not be so terrified that you're going to die that you don't try at all. Right. Yeah. I think that's a neat thing that is very unique to this game. It is. One downside to this, because we've given this a lot of love, and I think well-deserved love, is that you can have a bad first game of this. Especially yes. if everyone that's playing it is new, because the game is best when the most experienced player, I think, is the Sin player. Mm-hmm. That, I think, is going to create your best, because by its nature, the other pa- people are going to be working cooperatively, so you have three or two right. brains working together. But if you have a game, a first game, where everyone's playing it for the first time, it's probably not going to be shown in its best light. Yeah. And I, thought, I know a lot of people feel like the game, you know, early on anyway, they were like, oh, this isn't balanced. It's not the balanced. Sins it's player very is balanced. So, the Sins player is way too powerful. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you it's not. This right. game is balanced. It is. There's luck in it, and you sure. might have a game that feels like you didn't have a chance. That's fine. But I've seen games go both ways. I've seen games come down to the final die roll yep. on this one. It's balanced. You are both, both sides are leveling up quickly. You need to, yes, focus on your goal as the good guys. Mm -hmm. But it definitely is, just because they're rolling, the thing is people see the Sins player rolling more dice. Right. They are worse dice. They are, yeah. They're designed to be worse. Mm -hmm. So it's balanced. It is, yeah. It's a great game, though. It is. All right. 
Well, uh, number three for me is a game that has some of the best writing that I've really enjoyed mm. uh, in a game. This is an app-integrated game, kind of like what you talk oh. about with, with, with Mas Mansions of Madness and everything. This is one I enjoy a lot and I talk about a lot, and it's Destinies. Is this a horror oh. game? You... I would uh, not have thought of this. I thought this was a fantasy game. But it, I haven't played as much as you have. I've played a lot. of The first, the, the tutorial kind of scenario is like a werewolf yeah. story. There's, yeah, yeah. there's plagues of rats. Right. And a lot of that is, is a little bit more grounded. The the first expansion for the Sea of Sand one that's kind of you know in the Arabic Peninsula. Mm -hmm. That one's very much less horror and mm -hmm. very historical. Okay. The other expansion, Myth and Folklore, mm. leans into okay. a lot of those mythological horror elements a lot. Okay. You're you're wading through a bog and you see faint images through the fog of children laughing and dancing and disappearing. Nope. I'm and out. Stuff. Check please. No. I, I like the scenarios in this game a lot. I really like the 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 more horror kind of scenarios in there to the point where there's there's going live soon a new uh, game found uh, page. That I'm interested in, the Dark Quarter. Is that what you're talking no, about? No, no, no. Oh, that oh, happened. That's, that's even dip well, yeah, That ahead. one will I'm be on the list super excited at some about. point. Yeah, I can't sure. imagine it not being on these lists yeah, yeah, in the right. future. It looks so good. That's but there's the a Destiny's expansion coming out with Baba Yaga, the, oh, the, okay. the walking chicken house. <laughs> they, Baba Yaga! <laughs> so I guess uh, Lucky Duck surveyed uh, a lot of people and said, hey, which did you like more, the very historical grounded ones or the or the fantastical <laughs> horror ones? And people like, click, 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 mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, Destiny's is, is definitely a horror game. So, so much fun to lean into that story and everything. Oh, that's cool. And interestingly, they're using that system, basically tying together with Van Ryder, working together on The Dark Quarter, which is straight up a horror game. Yeah, uh, yeah, right? very that one New looking, Orleans horror, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't love Destinies, but I'm very much looking forward to Dark Quarter, so maybe yeah. I need to try some of the more horror ones. Chris. Yeah, so in a year or two, Dark Quarter. Yeah. You know it. I can't <laughs> wait for that game. All right, yeah. so Tom's number three. What do we got? All right, Tom's number three is gonna be uh, some sort of. Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> okay. Tell stories. Okay. You all suckers are playing that tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna be playing that for the first time. You're playing that for the first time Get ever tomorrow. Get ready yeah. to lose. You're <laughs> gonna lose the we, game. You're we, gonna lose. I'm on that team. We will be all right. We're gonna lose. The Roy's on the team. I've never won. We're probably going to lose, yeah. never, never won Ghost I've Stories. won. I never I, have. I, uh, it's a very tough game. It's a great game. This is a solid pick through and through. Mm -hmm. Now it's a... I don't know where I would put this on that line of spooky horror to, like, actual scary horror. Yeah. I think the artwork, which is superb artwork yes. from Piero here, softens that straight up just terror mm -hmm. because thematically it's about as bad as it gets yeah it's just sure it's oncoming it, hordes of demons yeah and, i mean yeah. i like, guess really terrifying stuff mm -hmm. if the artwork was scarier and was more of the simon kind of artwork mm -hmm. or like you know you were just talking about destinies that kind of artwork it'd be really bad yeah yeah as it is right now this kind of softens it up a little bit it's a fantastic game though mm -hmm. and uh yeah come back tomorrow and watch us play through some of that. It is a classic for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In space, no one can hear you scream, but at your game table, Nemesis can make you scream. <laughs> this is Aliens, folks. This is Aliens, the board game. <laughs> Legally there, distinct from Aliens. There have been Aliens, the board games, but this blows all of those out of the water. Um, this really feels like survival horror. Um, you know, you're trapped on a... Well, yeah, I'm talking about the original. There's also a Nemesis Lockdown, which is basically the same system in a slightly different environment. But you are... You, know, you wake up out of cryo sleep in a, in a ship, and there are xenomorphs, and you're trying not to make noise. You're trying to, to find escape pods. You're trying to repair broken engines. You're trying to set a course. You know, you're trying to shoot the aliens out of the ship if you can. Any number of different things. It's, it, you know, there's a traitor mechanism in there if Ooh. you want to play it that way, where people are, you know, trying to, you know, work against you and trying to, you need the ship to go to Earth and they want to send the ship to Mars or they want to, the only way they win is if everyone else dies. There's oh. all kinds of different things that can go on. Are those, it, are those options? Like you can play this. You can play it fully co-op. Sure. 
Yeah, you don't have to play it with the with the trader mechanism. A little more curious about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a game, I will say, that is a bit of a fragile game where you can have really, really bad sessions of this where you pretty much are toast after the first round or two. You know, if you pull the queen out of the bag too early or there are certain things that can happen that make it left. But the good sessions of this game mm-hmm. are so good mm-hmm. that you're willing to put up, I am, willing to put up with some of the less than spe- stellar uh, experiences and this one very much is a horror game. It's a horror survival yeah, game yeah. through and through. Um, they don't try to soften it. I mean, there's a little bit of humor in it, just like even I would say in the Aliens movies, they put a little bits of sure little I mean, little breaking little, the tension, little beats of horror to break the tension. They got a little bit of that here, but this is a horror survival game set in space. I mean, look at the look at the cover. They're yeah. they're, they're definitely going for it, and uh, I'm doing a really good idea, really this, good job with that. This game gets away with. Having the bad guys look like the guys from Aliens. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> they very much look like, you know. like that yeah. looks like the alien from Aliens mm-hmm. uh, or Alien and the uh, figures, the miniatures. With the, yeah. I mean, like, it's close. It's real close. I mean, wow. Yeah. I mean, you even have like the nest with the eggs and everything. It's, it's real close. It's wild how they close. can just. Do you I don't the, know. Do they, they have, have like the. Not Mouth exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, a, look at the look at the cover. That's, that's I how mean, they get away with it. It's not. I mean, it's kind of a cross between Alien and Predator going on right there. But uh, it's it's close. That's but how you get away with it, folks. It's real good though. That's no second mouth. Nemesis, yeah. legally distinct. Mm-hmm. All right, my number two is a crossover once again. Cthulhu Death May Die. Mike had it on the list. Again, check it out tomorrow. We've yeah. got plenty coming up here that you uh, that you can see about some of these games. Yeah, it's fun. It cuts to it quickly. You immediately are into the action. Immediately are punching cultists in the face and taking down baddies. And this just this is not a frenetic game, Mm-mm. but it does not waste time. No. Right. It's like a game that gets to it quickly, and yeah. therefore it's not that long. Also, which I like. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like that in this game, rules-wise, every time I have a question about something, the usually the answer is the simplest thing I can right. come up with. That's true. That's a very good. Which point. I really like that in a game. Hmm. If I'm not sure about something, the answer is usually the the simplest thing I can think of. Right. And then you look at them like, yeah, okay. This is Occam's Razor, the board game. It is. Mm. I like that. I like that very much in a game. Um, this one manages to do that, and which is why, again, in our estimation, it keeps moving up mm-hmm. for many reasons, but that's a big one for me. Yeah. So that's my number two. Cthulhu death may die. It might. It's funny. You when certainly I, will die, hmm. but death may die. May. When I edit these game and talks, I spend a lot of hours watching the same turns and, <laughs> and you know, re- recutting everything so it's nice and quick and stuff, and I, I, I feel like I walk away sometimes like, oh, I've played that game. <laughs> oh, no, I really haven't. Yeah, 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 but you spent hours, <laughs> yeah, kind of looking at the turns. Yeah, yeah. All right. My number two, in space, no one can hear you explode. Loading kittens? No. Mike, imagine, if you will, <laughs> uh-huh. your watch is a bomb. Your microphone is a bomb. Okay. That mask over there, bomb. Lantern, bomb. Okay. You have to defuse all of those in 10 minutes. Uh, time bomb? Fuse. Fuse. Oh, f- fuse? Fuse. Well, you're I certainly, you're, you're, you're certainly going with the, um, with the, tr- I don't even know how to call. I don't. I don't even know. Is it, it's, it's not a hipster pick. This is interesting because I would not this have game of this. does create. It's, panic. It, 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 it does panic. create panic that. Panic is a good way to yeah. Panic is, I, yeah. I guess I would not think of this as a horror game, but it does create a sense of unease and ah uh, anxiety. Mm-hmm. Definitely anxiety inducing by yeah. its nature. Oh wow! I suppose this is. I don't know if I would call this horror. I wouldn't it call it is, horror, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't... It's cinematic. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. I don't think I would call it cinematic horror. It's sort mm. of cinematic tension and that frenetic nature, yeah. that sort of scary feeling. I call of, it, you know how there's a difference between horror movies and suspense movies? This is yeah. a suspense game. Maybe that's a better way to put <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, but it's, they're, they're adjacent. Top they're 10 adjacent. suspense games. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say that they're adjacent to horror. Maybe that's what this more so is. But yeah, yeah. I just I thought about it, and I just thought, you know, how many times have I played a game that really gave me 
that much feeling of yeah. dread yeah. and horror and everything. Uh, if I, I'll tell you, if I had to work with the schlubs at this table <laughs> cooperatively in ten minutes uh -huh. and stack dice in order to not die. Uh -huh. I would just start writing my will. I think you should. Who are you going to give it to? You can't get that notarized quickly enough. <laughs> it's not going to matter. No. <laughs> no, I, you got to think these things through logically. I'm sorry, Z. You are correct. Yeah, you're mm. correct. I will go out as a rules lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you approaching this from a slightly different angle. I think it's... A terrible... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, it's, it's interesting. It's a suspense. I think the suspense, I think more for sure. Suspense, but, yeah. but it does create this feeling of dread. I, the, I agree uh, with that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's it's such a great, horrible setting to mm. be in. Yeah, there and is I, that, too. I mean, yeah. like you are going to die, I guess, if you don't you know, connect the right wires. Right. And I, I kind of debate, is this like an action movie? I think... Mm. Yeah. So for me, it fits the list because of the reaction I've gotten from the people at the table mm. when I've introduced this to them. And they've never... First of all, if they've never seen a board game do something like this before. Yeah, it's true. For sure. Right. Yeah. That is such a great first play of a game like mm. this. But I continue to have a lot of fun with it. I really like it. And despite what uh, the internet may or may not be saying about me at the moment, <laughs> that's my number two pick is Fuse. All right. What's Tom got for us? <sighs> number two for Tom is... Flatline. Oh, Mansions, Mansions of, of Madness. Madness. All right, well, that's, second edition. That's not surprising. That is which not which he wouldn't surprising. say, but I'll say. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we already put it on yours mine. and mine. You haven't put it on any it, list. This will no. be on the People's Choice. I almost guarantee. It's oh, gotta sure. be. Top yeah. five. It's gotta be. Top yeah. Five of it's choice. so. Um, what's the word? Eponymous. It's um. No, no ubiquitous. For? Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Yeah. Among the horror themes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, this is a modern classic. Yeah. Right, Mike? It's a modern it's classic. It's a modern classic. A modern, cl a modern a app assisted classic, so it won't be around in five no, years. No, no, no. This is But dying. other than that. This is very quickly dying. Yeah. yeah. iOS 16 no longer supports this. Yeah, folks. take one of the Fuse uh, sand timers. By the time that's over, this game is out of print. It's no good anymore. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You play Fuse with the sand timer? I do. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really big sand timer. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's I love the app in the pan. App in the pan is good. That's very good. All right. Um, the distance between my number one and every other game on this list is maybe larger than any other one to two from any list I've Jeez, done. Jeez, really? Okay. But to me, this this game, we were talking about Dark Quarter. Maybe that can do it. I'm struggling to think of a game that's ever going to do horror better than Final Girl. This is a love letter to horror movies. That's exactly what this right. game is. And what's so interesting to me about it is that this was not the original theme. I mean, this is based off of... Another game that actually has also a horrific theme, but in a slightly different manner, based off of Hostage Negotiator. Mm -hmm. Takes that core, iterates on it, adds to it, and basically, really, this is a love letter to horror movies. Think of any of your favorite horror movies from like the 80s or 90s. Willy Wonka. And they're going to have a a version of it here, because it's a modular game where you, you, know, you pick a final girl, which is... A, a trope in horror movies, you know, the last the last girl alive, you know, is the final girl. Um, you pick a final girl, you pick a setting, and you pick a place, and you kind of put them together, and you have this incredibly fun experience. So if you want to play, you know, kind of in the world of, uh, you know, um, Freddy Krueger or, 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 yeah, or Jason. Poltergeist or, yeah, or the, you know, Friday the 13th movies, you've yeah. got that option. It is so well done. It is so cinematic. Um yeah, I mean, it's just a fantastic solo game. It is a solo game. Um, uh, just mechanically it's fantastic, but also thematically, they absolutely knock this out of the park. Like, the little mechanical thematic touches that they do are great. When you're playing, like, in against the, the Freddy, you have to go into the boiler room, and so there's cards that you have to kind of work through the boiler room in this little, used with these cards. Um, it's just, it, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It is a really, really, really well done game. And again, this is so high up there as my number one, it wasn't even close, so... My number one, by a huge margin, is Final Girl. Very nice. I'll have to try it sometime. Mm -hmm. 
My number one slips into number one, not because I like it more than a lot of these other games I've mentioned. I don't. But because I think it is um, its own thing. It handles the theme it sets out to display very well, uniquely, and stands out from many games. I would even say all games. Okay. This is Vagrant Song. Oh, whoa, I didn't even think. I'm so mad at myself. Vagrant Song. This should have been on my list. You're a dummy. Spooky, but handles that with humor and a light touch. Yeah. It is, uh, it has that sort of, you know, steamboat willy trappings in artwork and setting. But as you read the passages, passages, and as you as you sometimes have these little encounters where you read a little paragraph in mm. the middle of a session, sometimes those are really spooky. Yeah. Like, and again, sort of like a ghost walked by me and it gave me a chill kind of spook. And I'm like, ugh. Mm. It's just like... And mm. they managed to make it... Uh, Halloween-y is the best way I can put it. Yeah. I mean, even just looking at that cover, you kind of know what you're going to get. Right. You know, the, the ghostly train, the spooky things flying everywhere, that glowing green light. That's what you're getting. Mm. That feeling. That creepy Americana traversing the wasteland sort of weird spooky thing in a box. Yeah. It does that thing really, really well. And it's like the only one I can think of that does that specific thing. So Man, I'm annoyed. Song I'm, really an, I'm annoyed that. with you. This is my. I have to make this my 11 through 20 now because this, this would absolutely have been on my list. How did you I, miss this, Mike? I don't know. How I missed it. It's a great pick, though, Z. It's I, a I, really good pick. I I, I'm it. very angry at myself that I haven't played this yet. Oh, but I wow. love one of my favorite tropes is the spooky ghost train mm -hmm. type thing. Oh, I love that my trope. Goodness, yeah, you'll like this. Yeah, and, and if you're talking about this cool passages that are really well written, yeah, and everything. it's good writing. Oh it's not gosh. much it's writing, not lot, but, but it's yeah. good writing. Yeah, well, I'd rather the little that is there be great. Mm -hmm. than and it's it, it uses period writing. It does. Like some of the way they write the things. Yeah, they're not are... ghosts, they're hates. You know, they, yeah, they, they just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, they, they kind of put you in that space. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll get around to playing that here sometime. Mm -hmm. But for me, my number one is the game that I've, I personally have had the most visceral reaction to when playing. It is, um, it doesn't make a lot of top ten lists around here, but it sure did make Trey Parker's. Oh, really? It's Abomination Air of Frankenstein. Mm. I enjoy oh, this game. Interesting. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It, uh, I need to try the Igor, the shorter variant, because it, it does outstay its welcome. But if you want to talk about spooky horror, mm -hmm. right? It's a Euro game. Yeah. You're going around, you're collecting resources. The resources you're collecting, though, are one, in the purpose of creating a Frankenstein monster of right. body parts. And right. two, the things that you're collecting are bone and sinew You're and muscle grave robbing and blood. sometime, aren't you? I mean, I mean, it's like straight up, yeah. very much body horror, yeah. you know, grave digging kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And not just that. They don't try to hide that at all. No. no <laughs> it really says the theme is front and center. Mm -hmm. When you go, you can go to the gallows where they've recently hanged some prisoners and say, hey, hey executioner, I will slide you this 20 mm -hmm. and you slide me that cadaver. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. go dig up bones in the, in the mortuary, but the Deader, the longer that the characters or the well the yeah, the the people that mm -hmm. you're digging up have been dead, the less likely you're to get fresh resources like blood and and, and the muscle tissue and stuff. That's that yeah. it's like really like visceral. Yeah. It's yeah. really visceral. When you go and, and get a body, like I get a corpse out of the hospital, it's not just three white cubes and two red and stuff. You you collect a card. You flip a card over and it shows you a dead person. Mm -hmm. The artwork is really visceral. I, yeah, I yeah. had a genuine reaction of just discomfort and mm. horror when I played this game. Like I didn't I I didn't like some of the feelings in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The way that yeah. when I watch a horror movie, I get those those ooh, you know kind of squishy feeling vibes. Right, right. This is a great pick. I don't mm -hmm. like this game very much. I thought yeah. it was. Too long, a overwrought. little too much going on, a little overwrought, yes, mm -hmm. but as far as nailing horror and like flipping over a car, like you're saying, me like, oh man, they did not hold back. They right. did not. That was that I didn't need that kind of detail. Yes, absolutely. Right. They nail it with that. But you could almost make an argument. I think you could make an argument that that that's maybe even the more responsible is too high fluting a word, but 
that's maybe being truer to the vision. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm, like yeah. there, you know, you are the game is about digging up dead bodies and creating a monster out yeah, of yeah. reanimated. You know, you're reanimating a corpse made up of, you of know, people of people, right? And and so maybe the best way to handle that is to make it pretty. You know, like no, I mean, in your it, face, it, it you elicits know? a reaction. Right, right, right. It yeah. does. It does. Yeah, you flip over a card that looks like a person. Right. You know that. Right. This arm that you are trying to electrify and bring to life on your mm -hmm. like cool little victory point monster board. <laughs> yeah. Like you're turning someone who was a person into victory points. Right. They don't try to abstract it too much. No, not at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. No. And so yeah, that uh, when I said I had a lot of ideas. Oh, that's going to be my number one. This is going to be number one. Yeah, yeah. This is this one that I thought of later. And I thought, oh no, that's the winner by mm. far. Yeah. 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 All right. That's good stuff. What do we got for Tom? This is the rightest of all picks, folks, right here. His number one. Ah, yes, 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 yes. He loves this he game. Does. Escape yeah. loves the aliens from outer space. Escape mm. from the aliens in outer space. Look how terrifying that looks. Is, <laughs> ah! This is a game that definitely is all up here in the mind. It is. Yeah, yeah. As it's... opposed to, you know, down here on the table. Right. This is it creates that sense of dread. You were yeah. talking a little bit about how you know Dead of Winter, and uh, you mentioned another one that where yeah. you can't trust people. Yeah, old werewolf. What yeah, we about yeah werewolf, werewolf, right? right? Yeah. This is like the ultimate game yeah. of that. Right. Where you're not sure where people are. Oh, you said it in Nemesis, Nemesis too. Nemesis too. Yeah. You're not sure where people are. You don't know who you can trust. You don't know where you should move. You might die at any moment, and you don't know where it's coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that in right. a box. Right. It's also not very attractive. Um, <laughs> it's a striking cover. It, it is. is a, the cover is cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when you look inside, it doesn't look like much. I've right. not played it, so I can't speak to that. But it, I get where he's coming from with that. Like you said, it's all up here. It's yes. all up here. You right. gotta. It, this is. Yeah, you, this is not watching the movie. This is reading the book. You right. gotta do the work yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean. Right. You gotta do. It. But mm -hmm. but no, when this works, it is. Spooky. You yeah. are always worried. You're about to bite it. Um, yeah, it's an interesting pick. Tom's a big, big champion of this. Yeah, one. yeah. All right. Well, that was us. Let's uh, let's take a look at what the people Ooh. chose. And I bet we're gonna. Wait, wait. Before you do it, Roy, I'm gonna say that eight of the people's. I'm trying to think if there's gonna be anything on the people's choice list that we haven't covered. What are obvious ones we didn't cover? I mean, Arkham Horror, the Maybe board Arkham game. Maybe Eldritch. Eldritch. Arkham Horror, Eldritch. I'm going to say I mean, eight no. of our picks are going to be represented in the people's choice. So you're basically okay. saying Arkham and Eldritch are the two. They might be the two. I'm going to say, um, gosh, eight's a good one. Well, what do you want, seven or nine? He, keeping in mind, he actually did this. I, I put together you this remember? Line, so I do not. Um, I'm going to take, take seven. Yeah, okay. there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll take... Um, you take, uh, I'll take 12. Anything else. 12. <laughs> All right, yeah. right. Okay, I'll say seven, go. you say eight, Mike. Right, Here we go. Right. Number one wingspan. Let's go. Okay, Arkham, Arkham Horror. Right. That's oh, one Fury of Dracula already. There's two we haven't picked. So, Arkham Horror. I'm sorry. Yeah, Arkham Horror. Third edition is what that happens to be. Right. Then right, we got Ghost Stories. We've got Nemesis. And number eight, Fury of Dracula. Third or fourth edition, whatever. Mm -hmm. Dead number of Winter. At number six, that's two there we did not mention. Right. And then we've got the top five people's choice. There we go. What do we got? These will pop up one at a time. Okay. Yeah, I was Eldritch, Eldritch Horror. Like... I'm at seven now. My Well, you know, you already are out. I'm out. Eldritch, oh! Betrayal at House on the Hill. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. I just don't happen to like the game very much. Arkham yeah. Horror, the card game at right. number three. Yeah. I agree with that. Number two, Horrified. Horrified. What is it, Dead of Winter, you think, no, number one? No, Dead of Winter was already on there. What's number one going to be? Pandemic? Betrayal. Uh, no, no. Uh, has, have we had um, Mansions of Madness yet? Yeah. Mansions of Madness, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mansions of Madness. Right. So That's seven. a lot of Cthulhu games. It is a lot of Cthulhu a games. A lot. That's four Cthulhu games, mm -hmm. I think. That's the whole Arkham Files verse except for Elder Sign. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and uh, Final Hour. <clears throat> And unfathomable, yeah. right? I mean, oh, that's true too. Oh, Final that hour, the, yeah. You're right. That is in the Arkham Files line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. I mean, again, the Mansions of Madness with the app integration. Yeah, it's hard to, to. It's the. It's like the opposite of Escape the Aliens in Outer Space. Right. Yeah. It does all the heavy lifting for you. 
sounds, mm, creepy yes. things. It basically tells you, put a token here. <laughs> right. Ooh. You don't need to do any heavy right. lifting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a very good pick. It's definitely placing you in that world. Yeah. All right, well, that was a uh, fantastic time full of spookiness, and uh, I, for one, feel like we knocked it out of the park. I liked it. I liked mm -hmm. it, too. I had a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of crossover. Of uh, that is the last uh, of our programming for today. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But tomorrow, we're going to be closing out. We're going to be finishing up strong with our Out of Spectacular. We're going to be starting bright and early at 9 a.m. with crowd surfing. So normally we do that later in the afternoon, but we're going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to be still buzzing for my coffee going through these crowdfunding projects. Yes. So yeah, I look uh, forward to seeing what, what kind you, of wackiness uh, could uh, could happen there. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what you behave like when you're a buzz rather than just kind of defeated at the end of a long day. That's a very good point. When, when life hasn't beaten me down yet, correct. All yeah. right, well, Interesting. so we got that. We've got more playthroughs, of course. We've got more contests, of course. And then we also are going to have our big uh, game and play, game and talk. Game and talk. Game and talk, sorry, for Cthulhu Death May Die. But... For now, that's going to do it for us. I am Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun hiding from those spooky things in your closet. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>